Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Jordan, and thank you very much for being here today. In April, I took a trip with my colleagues to Guatemala to see firsthand the results of human trafficking and abuse of women that occur in the country. I saw with my own eyes the devastating impacts that human trafficking has on the young girls. And I know that this same trafficking, trafficking is occurring at the border, our border. We need real solutions to act swiftly to address the root causes of this issue. Mr. McAleenan, I have a lot of questions, so try to keep your answer short enough that I can get to them all. Nobody wants children to be separated from their parents, and we all want to ensure that children are treated with dignity and housed comfortably. What are the factors a Border Patrol agent uses what he goes through in order to assess these illegal family units when they arrive? So by and large, the vast, vast majority, well over 99% or uh, 98% of, of children that arrive with parents are kept together uh, in the process. Uh, the Border Patrol agent or CBP officer encountering that family uh, will, will undertake the analysis under the criteria in the President's Executive Order from June 20th of 2018 and the Missile Court Order, uh, which are consistent with prior policy that is in, this, in the interest of the safety and welfare of the child. Uh, and cases are, again, prosecution for a criminal offense or, or serious criminal history, abuse or neglect expressed by that, that parent or the child where we have a concern, or a medical emergency. Those, those are the main uh, indicators of, of a potential separation. How many children's lives have been saved by the Border Patrol? So I, I think that's a really important question. Uh, we, we make uh, over 4,000 rescues a year. Already in the first nine months of this fiscal year, the U.S. Border Patrol has made 3,800 rescues. The rescues on the river have gone up tenfold. Uh, we're, we're, we're seeing agents almost every day dive into the water with their full equipment on to try to rescue uh, families uh, crossing in the water. It's high water uh, this time of year, and it's very dangerous. So uh, 3,800 rescues so far this year. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. What is the average size of migrant groups that the Border Patrol is encountering between the ports of entry? And how is that impacting the Border Patrol's operations? Yeah, this year has been unlike any other we've seen in our history, uh, with well over 150 large groups of more than 100 migrants crossing together. Uh, we, we peaked with a group of 1,036 migrants crossing as, as, as one group, uh, all from Central America. 900 plus of them were family units. Uh, but since Mexico has started uh, to do their interdiction operations, address the transportation networks on their highways, we've seen a dramatic drop. We've only had four large groups since the start of, of Mexico's operations and zero in July to date. Wonderful. How is it the policy for separating children from their parents? What do you use except in the zero tolerance? What's different in this administration and past administrations? Right now, our policy is identical uh, to what we were doing before the zero tolerance practice for, that ended uh, over a year ago. The same? Yes. Okay. In fiscal year 2019, the Department of Homeland Security identified nearly 5,500 migrants presenting as family units that turned out to be fraudulent. Why would adults use children to help them cross the border? Yeah, unfortunately, we see that all too often now. It's been a, a big focus of this year to try to identify those adults that are bringing children with them that are not their own, to try to take advantage of what they perceive as a loophole in our law that would allow them to be released in the United States. Uh, we've had egregious cases, including a 51-year-old man who bought a six-month-old child for $80 in Guatemala uh, and admitted that when confronted with a DNA test, uh, by a, a Homeland Security Investigations agent uh, conducting a pilot at our, one of our border stations. How has the Flores settlement impeded our ability to enforce the law? It, it's prevented us from getting immigration results from judges that can be effectuated. Mm -hmm. At what point would a child be separated from the adult they arrived with? At what point? Mm -hmm. it, it, it would depend on it, when an issue was identified. Uh, for instance, we unfortunately had a 15-year-old girl a few months ago tell us on her second day in custody uh, that her father had raped her uh, the night before they crossed the river. Uh, and so she was immediately separated uh, and, and taken care of and sent to Health and Human Services as a result. So it's for safety, isn't it? Correct. If a family unit is housed together, how are they housed? Are they in a room with other families? 
Yes, uh, we, we separate families uh, generally by uh, demographic and gender. So male head of household families with other male head of household families. Uh, same for uh, female head of household families. The age of the kids is also a factor. We try to just keep people in the safest groups possible during the short time they're at the border. But what if one of the- Gentlemen, time has expired. Mr. Okay. Christian Morphy. Thank you.